What I'm, what I'm really doing today is really covering an introduction as far as the agenda, going into additional myths about LNG. And of course, the first uh, question is additional. And uh, as David has said, we actually published a list of myths uh, at the last uh, Gas Tech. And uh, now we come up with some new ones, uh, some suggestions we have from other people and some from our own personal experience. And so we have a new list that we'll be covering. And of course, uh, the problem with time is that we really can't cover all of the list. And so we're going to just go through the top three in detail. And then we'll do a kind of an interesting summary. The whole idea in the introduction is that we're really trying to address uh, you know, project uh, issues that go across both the commercial and the technical. And when you look at it, you see that you have uh, commercial issues that really drive, in many cases, the configuration of the plant, which of course is technical, but then the configuration of the plant really drives the cost, which of course is back to commercial. So two of these are very much interrelated. Our goal in the, uh, these myth papers and the, the sequel is really to bring the commercial and the technical people together and to really try to correct the misconceptions that uh, very often occur, especially with new people entering the business. Uh, one thing uh, you'll see is that the commercial uh, sessions do not have written papers in general, but we felt that it was uh, essential to have a written paper with this because uh, we wanted to have more detail. And so you'll see that there's actually a written paper that you'll have in your uh, CD. Yeah, the thing is, uh, due to time limitations of uh, the time that David says, we can't really go through all the details of uh, each one of the myths, so we're going to really try to cover just the high-level concepts associated with each, each one of those. So what is the, uh, the new myths that we're uh, talking about, the new misconceptions? And here are the, uh, the list of the five, but I, I like to just focus on the third one and the fourth one for a moment because we're not really going to cover that in great detail in the, in the today. We're going to do it, as I say, it's in the paper. And the third one there is a standard or generic plant is the future of LNG. Again, that's a myth or misconception. And then the fourth one is the LNG train is the primary driver of total plant costs. Uh, you can ask questions about it later, or we refer to the paper for that, that part in detail. These are the ones we're really going to cover today is uh, shale gas or pipeline gas is of liquefaction quality. You know, is that really true or not? Uh, next one is a uh, subject that's been with me living my entire career of uh, working in engineering is process technology first, equipment second. Is that really true? And then the last one is new process technologies offer step changes in improving plant efficiency and reducing costs. So those are the ones we're going to cover in uh, summary form today. And you might as well now get on to the first one, which is uh, you know, shale gas or pipeline gas is of liquefaction quality. Is that really true? And you can see a lot of people believe that since the pipeline gas has been treated somewhere along the way, very often at source, there's a belief that there's really not uh, much pretreatment required you know, for the LNG plant. And that if you don't have that pretreatment or that extensive pretreatment, that results in the cheapest LNG plants. The problem is that if you start looking at shale gas and particular pipeline gas, that you really get into a whole bunch of issues having to do with uh, it's, it may be one gas that's coming in, but it's really shared with another pipeline or it's going to be shared with another pipeline in the future. So I really have to worry about that. Also, specifications in different regions actually change. They're not necessarily all consistent uh, in all the different regions. So that's a consideration. And then you have considerations of the fact that the uh, contaminants that you might have are low, but they are still not so low to be not a problem, but they may still be high enough to cause you a problem. And so that's, uh, and you can't just count on the fact that the contaminants are not going to be there. And so, and to continue on with that, I have a table here. And you can see on the left side of the table is the kind of specifications for what's in a uh, pipeline. The right side is what's really required for an LNG plant. This kind of a table is, quite frankly, a table that drives people and designers like me a little crazy. Because it, it seems like such simple numbers, but each one of those numbers has a great significance in the design of the plant. And just pick one, like oxygen. I mean, there's uh, many pipelines, it'll say there's oxygen in the pipeline, and re normal reserves is not any oxygen. If there, is there really oxygen in the pipeline, or is there not? 
Well, there's a big, great significance if you go into an LNG plant with the oxygen. Now, I won't go into great detail of all the issues with that, but, but there, are, there, are, there are problems with that. Each one of these, you know, whether it has benzene or hydrogen sulfide, it's also a question of uh, if you have hydrogen sulfide, you know, how, what's the real range of the hydrogen sulfide? And you, you, want to, you do not want to over-design, nor do you want to under-design. So each one of these things is, uh, is a continuing problem. So I think uh, when you really get down to it, there's a lot of risk associated in assuming that the pipeline gas can be f directly fed to the LNG plant. You really want to control the complexity of the plant, which in effect uh, controls the cost of the plant. So the truth is, as the bottom says there, is liquefaction quality gas does not exist as some gas treatment is always necessary to reliably meet on, on spec LNG. So that's uh, the first one. The next uh, myth has to do, and I have to admit this has always been a personal uh, favorite of mine, is that uh, process, technology, you know, process technology first, uh, equipment second. And the idea behind this myth or misunderstanding is that the, that the plant equipment is somehow is secondary to the process you know, selection. And, and it seems logical because most people go to the process licenses first and they try to work out what the process, what the chemical thermodynamics are and, of the plant. And it seems like a logical thing. It's actually quite logical and is what's done in many businesses like ethylene ammonia. That's, that's really the way it kind of works. But the, when, and this, this basic myth is really supported by the fact that you have uh, a belief that you know, high quality engineering can really, in effect, uh, find any supplier to build what you want. And so the, the myth is that let the suppliers kind of figure out the problems associated with what you really want from a process viewpoint. 